A lot of my other friends were playing basketball, football, going to the beach. I was picking olives. But I learned lots about olive trees and olive oil that way. And 12 years ago, I came to back to Canada because my family in Greece is uh, producing olive oil. We produce around 5,000 tons of olive oil a year. Unfortunately, we only sell 400 tons to 500 tons of olive oil a year. Everything else goes to big ships that they take it and basically they take it to Naples, Italy and they refine it. So from our olive oil, we only sell a little bit. So when I started here 12 years ago, I started our brand, Acropolis, to try to sell our olive oil. Historically speaking, um, in Crete, the mineral civilization was trading olive oil with the uh, Egyptians, the Persians, 5,000 years ago. So in Crete, where this olive oil is from, we've been dealing with olive oil for thousands, thousands of years. It's not that we just came out with olive oil yesterday. What happens in, in the olive oil industry is adulteration. 95% of the olive oil today is adulterated. Uh, known as the king of the variety of olive oil. The king of the variety of olive oil comes from the Koroneki. Our olive oil is from one mill. My cousins work in the mill. My cousins pick the olives. Our olive oil, every bottle has its own lot number on the top. Actually, something that I didn't even mention to you before, our olive oil has the chemical analysis in front of the label. It's the only olive oil in Canada that has that. It has the PDO symbol, which means from a protected designation origin. We're recognized by the European Union that this is an estate of a recognized origin. It has biodynamic farming, as I told you with uh, how we do biodynamic farming. We use no pesticides, we use no chemicals, we use no industrial farming. Everything is hand-picked. which focuses on environmental policy in Canada. He sits on many boards, probably too many to, to mention, but they include the Ontario Power Authority, the San Francisco-based Consultative Group on Biological Diversity, the Canadian Association of Physicians for the Environment, uh, the Sustainability Network, the World Wildlife Fund, Climate Advisory Committee. He conducted critical research on mercury pollution in his career, and he initiated a campaign to shut down coal-fired generating stations. So if you find yourself breathing a little easier, you might think the work of Bruce Lorre. We're here today to talk about his latest book that he co-wrote with his author, Rick Smith. And the reason I'm interviewing Bruce today is because they split the, uh, the tasks in the book. And Bruce decided to be the one who sweated. And he sweated in one of our saunas uh, to measure what came out of it. And the new book, Talks In, Talks Out, this one right here, is an extraordinary work. It's the much-awaited follow-up to, to Rubber Duck. And so I'd like to just to welcome Bruce here. Thank you very much for coming, Bruce. Yeah, thanks, Rodney. I wanted to know if we could just back up. This book here, this caught my eye years ago, Slow Death by Rubber Duck. And I told Bruce that as a journalist, I was considering a book called Death by Convenience because all the things that are so convenient in our lives are making us sick. And you guys put a lot of dangerous chemicals. What you did is you, you treated yourself as a guinea pig. And I'm wondering why you decided to go that way. Why you decided to make yourself a personal guinea pig? Yeah, well, you know, we've been working on these issues. I, I've been working on these issues for uh, probably 20 years now. And it's very hard to get public attention talking about toxic chemicals. You know, people get scared of the idea of toxic chemicals. Uh, governments in Canada and mostly around the world have been very poor at regulating and labeling uh, the toxic chemicals that are in all of these products. So uh, 
Rick, Rick, my co-author, and I wanted to make this a much more personal story. So we wanted to prove to people that if you're using everyday products like Teflon frying pans, uh, like uh, personal care products that contain phthalates and parabens, uh, microwaving in plastic, like that's uh, BPA, bisphenol A plastic, that the, the chemicals in these products will end up in your body. And, uh, you know, at the time, chemical companies used to say, oh, well, we might have these chemicals out there in these products, but... We don't have an official owner's manual for the human operating system. And that in some respect, we are groping in the darkness to find that elusive key, or I should pluralize that, the elusive keys for ultimate vitality and longevity. Is a rabble rouser. Let's give a hand for a rabble rouser. I've seen him. He's a passionate assistant, a raw milk advocate, a biodynamic farmer for over 33 years, instrumental in initiating the national organic and biodynamic certification standards in Canada, leading the battle to legalize raw milk. Talk about raw milk and allergies. Thank you, Michael, for the work you do. I really don't understand why you clapped after his presentation. It was so gloom and doom. <laughs> you know, I, think, I, I expected that you would say the good side of GMO is that those people, you know, who, who um, work in that field, they will die out soon. Okay. So this problem will be solved sooner or later. <laughs>